Welcome to C++. I'm Blades, and this is what we're doing as we found out in our setup area. So let's do some foundation work, shall we? Um, utility stands out and math stands out. So let's get on with it. Um, here we go. Source. New folder. Yeah. Let's have a folder first of all. Let's do it all properly. Start with maths. And in maths, I want a new file. Guess what that's going to be called? You guessed it. Maths. Oh, what decisions we have to make. Uh, really too bothered actually, it can be either, but, uh, hmm, I know what we'll do, all files, lowercase, keeps things easier as long as I stick to one kind of idea, so, let's have a new file, um, we can call it anything we want, he says, scratching his beard, well, uh, we start it's the foundations really, so uh, I think we'll have a vector 3D, how about that? Uh, we'll make it a header file, there we go. Now in C++ we have header files and we have compilation files or CPP files. Um, well, we'll forget the latter, we'll just do header files for now, because that's easy. We need here header files vector 3D. Yeah, this will do. Right, all header files start with telling the compiler only to ever use them once. We do that by putting in pragma. Oh god, I'm good at spelling. And we only want this to happen once. So, what we're just saying there to the compiler is only ever use this file once. If it's been duplicated within the course of the program, then come back and reference the first time it happens. Simple, really. And we're going to use namespace, like there was that namespace in the standard library. So, we'll have one of those. Space thing. There we go, Amber GL. Mm, don't like that. Amber, yeah, that's better. There we go, we've got a namespace. It's that easy, that's how you program. Um, next part is a choice again. I always get stuck on choices, so let me go grab a cup of coffee whilst I choose. We have classes and structures. Uh, the yin and the yang of C++. Classes, by definition, are private. All the Anything that's in a class is private by default. Anything that's in a structure is public by default. That's it. That's the choice. God, this is a complicated language, isn't it? Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. That was a really nice coffee. So, let's start with... I was thinking of making it a class, but I like stru structure. Um, I use structures because a class is going to use these structures, rather than uh, using classes to use classes, I suppose. It doesn't matter. You can put class here if you want. I'm going to have a struct. I think, without a capital S. There we go. We'll have a struct. Uh, I've called it Vector 3D, haven't I? So, Vec 3. There we go. Nice abbreviation. Structure, so everything's public. That's handy. But what is a Vec 3? Or Vector 3D? In simplest way of looking at it, it's a, a point in 3D space. That's completely the wrong way of describing it, but that's the best way of thinking about it. 
It's a single point in 3D space. Uh, so it has a position. Um, it will have um, X, Y, Z. Why not? And we'll use floating point. Um, basically because we can then put a decimal place in there. There you go. Instead of integers, basically. Uh, I say basically one more time. I'm going to basically hit myself. Ow! I think we'll carry on with a Y. Hmm. And an X. Yeah, Z will be better. Come on, brain. Brain's not working today. Can you tell? <laughs> when does it ever? There you go. That's a vector 3. Float X, float Y, and float Z. And a lot of squiggly lines. Because I've forgotten a semicolon. Oh, C++ needs semicolons. There we go. And that will get rid of all the wiggly lines. Yes, it does. And what I'm going to do is just tell the computer what to expect um, this structure to be. I mean, float x, float y, float z. Yeah, you can leave it as that if you want. And then you just have vec3.x, vec3.y, vec3.z. Great. No, I want it a bit more technical than that. I'm going to use a keyword here, which you may or may not have come across before. Explicit. Hmm. It literally means what it says. It's telling the compiler not to use what I'm going to write next as a way of how can you put it? Um, reformatting and um, simplifying. Um, looking for words here that describe what the compiler does. Mash everything up. Yes, it does that. It, I, I, what it can do, the compiler, <coughs> is it can pick up um, on three floats in your program, anywhere in your program, and suddenly decide it wants to use VEC3 to describe them. I'm going to say no, 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 no. We explicitly need to ask it to be a VEC3. You can't just start, you know, messing about with me code and doing this, that and the other. So I'm just, just telling the compiler, leave off, lay your hands off, this is a VEC3. This is, it's got to be used, it's the user's choice, not the compiler's choice. Oh, here we go, VEC3. Very difficult programming there. So we're going to have float A equals 0.0f. For a float, always put F after float, please. I see it all over the internet. Nobody puts the F after a float. You know what happens then? I'm using a 64-bit system, and the compiler looks at 0, 0.0 and goes, Oh, he wants a double. A double what? A, a double float? A 64-bit float? No, 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 no. I want a 32-bit everyday float, thanks. I don't want anything massive, because if I put it down as a 32-bit float, you've got 64 bits. You can handle two of these at a time. Yeah, twice as fast. Think about that one. So that F makes your program twice as fast. It does, actually. Sort of. For a lot more reasons and just that it's a float. So we'll have B um guess what? I think I'm gonna be really inventive and make the last one C. How's about that for balls, eh? A, B and C, who'd have guessed it? So A equals 0.0 uh B equals 0.0 F and C equals 0.0 F. So we have three variables um, they default to nothing, zero, point zero. Um, ah, yeah, we better tell it to assign those variables. That'd be a good idea. So I'll put a colon here, and we'll just assign those variables. So we will assign x equals a. Laugh at this, y equals b. Yes, folks. 
and z equals c. Yeah, that's it. A couple of curly braces because it's a function and there's nothing in the function. So that's that. Um, see if I can get all of this in screen. Actually, go away you a minute. Thank you. I can get it all in screen now. There you go. Um, wasn't that hard? Um, no, it wasn't. That is standard kind of setup for a function. Um, basically, you've got variables that the function uses, uh, the function declaration, and that bit there is the definition. So that declares what the function is going to be for the compiler, and that defines what this function does, which is absolutely nothing. It stores x, y, and z for us. It doesn't do anything with them. It's well at this stage, it doesn't anyway. Um, later on, we will alter this. Oh, no semicolon at the end. Please don't put one. Um, normally, in a header file, we would, and we would put this functional part into a .cpp file. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm writing this more like C rather than C++. So there isn't a semicolon there. Um, here we're going to write all the complex functions for our VEC3. So let's write those slash slash uh, functions belonging to VEC3. Right, that's that written. That was hard. And here we're going to have uh, functions belonging to the system, uh, the operating system, like plus, minus, equals, you know, that kind of thing. Because yes, we will want to at some time add two VEC3s together to form another VEC3. Pretty simple stuff, but that kind of functionality belongs to the system and not to us. Uh, we can program it, we can program the system to do anything we want. <laughs> Beauty of C++. Uh, what we want for VEC3 functions are going to be the special bits and pieces that we need for 3D. Well, let's save that out. There you go. There's your Vector 3D. Difficult, difficult mathematical processes. Um, yeah. Done. There we go. All done. Let's add a new file. And we're going to do something more complicated, shall we? We will do... Uh, a matrix. Let's do a matrix. Yeah, that sounds really mathematical. Let's make it four dimensional, not three dimensional, but four dimensional. Let's let's really extend the boundaries out. Again, a header file. Uh, that means pragma. Once there we go. And um, what should we call this one then? Mm. I put a namespace in. Did I close off my namespace or did it do it for me? Oh, it did it for me. Oh, that was very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah. Namespace. Amber again. There we go. Uh, struct. It's going to be a complex structure. Oh, very complex. Um, we'll call it map4. Why not? We can. There's our structure. Now, it's a matrix, a 4x4 four four matrix. Very complicated mathematical stuff. Um, sorry to say, but it's, it is. Um, I've done it again, you know. Put your semicolons in. Don't forget your semicolons. Oh dear. And, uh, yeah. What I'm going to do is exactly the same as VEX3, um, but it's just going to be, be a bit more typing instead of three floats. We're going to have 16. Yeah, 4x4. Four four. Now, 
because I'm a human being and I'm simple, I'm going to use floats again. I'm going to go with row then column. So row zero, column zero. Okay. Is that fair enough? Yeah? Everybody happy? So row zero, column one. You get to see the pattern yet? How's about uh, row zero, column two? Yeah? Well, yeah, I think you've got it now, haven't you? Row, oh, by the way, these are the number zero, not the letter O. Row zero, uh, column three. Uh, so I've got zero, one, two, three, that's uh, four. So there we go, that's the next line. Guess what this is? Row one, column zero. Row one, column one. Difficult, isn't it? Now, if you were thinking that the mathematical programming side of this was going to be um, a little bit harsh, I better warn you now, it isn't. <laughs> Row one, <laughs> column two. Um, thing is, we have computers to do the maths. We don't need to. I better put semicolons at the end, up there. C plus plus after all. Uh, float. I think you can get this now. Row two, column zero, maybe. Stop putting silly commas everywhere. Uh, row one, column one here. Um, no, 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 no. Row two. Let's do row two, shall we? Row two, column two, and row two, column three. God, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really slow this morning. I don't like mornings. You can tell, can't you? And never mind. So that's my problem, not yours. Uh, column one, I'm on. Yeah. Row three, one, two. And after writing this, you are now a mathematical genius. Yeah. That's it. And there's all the variables. <coughs> all we've got to do now is <laughs> tell the uh, compiler. Thank you, Red Squiggly. Tell the compiler, um, declare the compiler exactly what this is supposed to uh, be yeah what we're doing with all these variables at the moment we've got mat 4 dot r 0 c 0 etc 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 that's all I've got just like it was with uh, vec 3 we only had x y and z but we better start giving an explanation so we can actually put numbers into here and make it all usable hope you want to do some typing because <clears throat> uh, here we go. Explicit. Thank you. At four. Open brackets. Now let's start putting these variables in. Do float. <laughs> A. <laughs> Equals. And you're thinking zero, aren't you? No. One. Why one, you ask? Yeah, indeed. Why one? Because with a matrix, if you look matrices up and look up 3D programming uh, of any kind, really, we'll go on about this identity matrix thing. And then an identity matrix? What's one of those blades? I hear you ask. Well, an identity matrix is the basic matrix which, when timesed mathematically by any other matrix or whatever but won't do anything. It won't alter anything. And that's why it's special. Because it just, it's like multiplying something by one. It don't do now. So, if it does nothing, it's 
pretty useless, but it saves us having to make it equal to 1 every time we type a matrix in that we don't really want to be putting all this lot in, so we'll do it here, saves us typing it in later. How's about that? Good, eh? So how many have I got now? Float C. I'll have a D as well. Go on. Uh, D. Click on that. There we go. D equals 0.0F. Comma. There we go. Uh, just have a look at our squigglies, make sure I'm okay. Open bracket, close bracket, yeah. 1.0, 0, 0.0, C, D. Excellent. Take the comma as well, why not? Actually, I'll take the lot. And then just edit it afterwards. Uh, yeah, that'll do. V. 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 There we go. Take off these parentheses. We we'll get to the end one. Uh, A. B. C. D. Oops. E. F O F G H I'm not really too positive it looks put an I in, but I'm going to use it anyway. I J A L M yeah N I'd want to use O and P uh, don't want that final com uh, comma so we'll take that off uh, I'm going to put that coal on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we all know what's coming up next, don't we? Yeah. We are going to take... Control... Sorry, Shift... Uh, shift, Alt, that lot. And pop it there. Please. Ah. Uh. No. Hold. I liked. Copy. Oh. B. Uh. Never mind. Uh, easy to do it the other way then. Get rid of you. That's just to you. There we go, that's better. Comma. Yep. Just copy and paste them over. Make sure you don't make any typing mistakes. <laughs> oh god, I'm one to talk, aren't I? Paste. Yeah, here's me copying and pasting like a boss. There we go. That's all of them, isn't it? Zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three. Good. That makes sense. Yep. And just space two of those. 
get a bracket. So, A, B, C, D, and you thought programming was going to be hard, huh? Nope. Programming is all about patience. E. F. And I mean a lot of patience, really. And uh, double checking everything that you do. Now, that brings me to uh, a couple of things that I really ought to mention. Because when you are learning programming, well, there's two things that get rammed down your throat. One is error checking. <laughs> yeah. Um, checking for errors. Always check for errors. Make your programming as robust as whatever you want to make your program robust as. Uh, check for errors here, there, everywhere. Okay, if you want to. I'm not going to stop you. But if you're checking for errors everywhere, why are you programming? Yeah, think very carefully about that. If you program something properly in the first place, why are you checking for errors? There's a good reason why. <coughs> A very valid reason why, because the computer can actually get it wrong, is one of the answers. And yes, it can. Red squigglies. Thank you. Let's just check I haven't forgotten anything. What's going through all of that lot? all the f's, we've so got floating point, we've got all of our variables equal to something, a to p, yeah that looks good, um, I do want to just open this a minute, there we go, Ugh. Why does it keep writing? Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft. Copy. Paste. Thank you. Copy. And you can see they're exactly the same. Just written the same thing twice. Just using different letters. There you go, matrix 4D, done. So what was the other thing that I was thinking of? There's um, error checking, something to think about. Always check for errors, yeah. One of my bugbears about that is uh, if you're going to check for errors all the time, why don't you program it properly in the first place? Yeah. If you keep it simple enough, then there won't be any errors. I mean, all, the only errors you can make in this is typing errors. And as you can tell, every time I make a type, oh, if I miss a comma, what happens? Red squigglies. If I type in D, by accident, we get red squigglies. Now, come on. <laughs> is it difficult to make errors these days? Yes. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Uh, especially copying and pasting. If I put a D there and then copied it and pasted it into here, then yeah, that'd be a valid error. That'd be a copy and paste error. And the help IntelliSense system wouldn't be able to pick up on it. You could put start putting checks here to make sure that our functionality was correct and it was building this mat 4 correctly. And it isn't at the moment because 
not about the ones, didn't we? We want to make this equal to one. Goes in a diagonal. The identity matrix. I did talk briefly about it. I'm not going to talk any more about it. It's the most important matrix of all, but there you go. As long as you know that it's one in a diagonal and you put those ones in, then it's good to go. And there we go. Save. 30 minutes. All your maths done. How's about that? Complicated? No. You're just following a simple rule. It looks a lot easier when you type it like that. It looks complicated if you type it like that. But it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. The difference is I want to store 16 floats here and I only want to store three floats here. By the way, I could put ABC there and XYZ here. It, the letters mean nothing. It's just that XYZ is the convention that I use. It's my habit. You could use words. You could use uh, X axis, Y axis, Z axis. Make it plain as day what you're going to be putting in there. But I don't want to do that because I want to use it for maths as well. Um, otherwise, I would put axis there. We probably will do in other parts of the program. We'll actually state that this is the x axis or whatever. But not at this point because this is just um, holding data. It's just going to be holding the data for us. That's all it does. There we go. That's done. That's done. You altered. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. Jason is still on test, haven't I? So, there we go. under tasks. And uh, help. Save that out. Means I can now just prove to you. Nothing there. Terminal, run build task. There you go. And that's what a successful build looks like. That's my library, and it now contains a VEC 3 and a MAT 4. Do you believe me? Well, okay. Um, let's put that back to test. I'll do it properly. Let's go and uh, build a program. Need that anymore? It's all set up to uh, hook straight into Amber SL. I, no, it isn't. <laughs> I have forgotten something, haven't I? I always forget something. That's why it worked perfectly. Oh, headers. We have to alter the dot profile. So src uh, forward slash. I'm going to use I. Okay, maths slash uh, vector 3d please dot h source maths matrix 4d dot h perhaps if we put them all in here or it won't compile them all it's done is it's compiled that top one and that one. Um, sorry about that. My bad. There we go. Just pop that back. Let's try building it again, shall we? Let's try building it this time with the files. Run build task. There you go. Exactly the same thing. So now I know it's correct. That's about that for an easy build system. All you do is you add whatever files you want to here. Your headers called the dot H's sources dot CP P's and at the end of the each line that slash just tells it to continue on to the next line so that is actually all one line 
all of those three there. Uh, we'll save, yeah, that's saved. Good. Yeah. That, that, number SL tasks, test, yep, good. Back to our main program. This is where you can have problems, including stuff. Now it's a library, so I really want it under angle brackets. Will it come up? Uh, maths. Forward slash. Hmm. I don't think it has come up, has it? Uh, well, it's not saying it, so let's just try. See if it's in here. No. Hmm. Okay. I don't care. So maths forward slash. Um, I'm going to put maths. Dot H. No. Vector three D. Which let's see if that comes up. Just save it. See it. No, it's got a red squiggly. It doesn't like it at all. Well, that's interesting. I've got the include path in. Ooh. Ooh. What's it done? So, do we have a VEC3? Uh, no, we don't. We have Amber. Oh, yes, there it is. VEC3. Uh, what can we put in the brackets? There you go. One, two, three. Again, please, please, please use F's. Uh, what do we do with that then? Well, pop that in there. Uh, I'll show you how to use it. And uh, let's have a look. X equals Let's give it a variable name A. That's a good variable name, isn't it? A dot X. See it comes up for me on the IntelliSense. Just when, yeah, we'll go down a line. Uh, y equals a dot y, please. simple program again. Nothing special, just to make sure that you, you, you know you, that we're on the right track. Okay. Yep, Z, that'll do nicely. Yeah, and that's it. 
So what we're going to do is print out to the screen uh, the value of x, y and z that are now held in the variable called a. That's complicated, isn't it? Oh, Jason's okay. Yeah. Terminal. Um, there it goes. Warnings. Never ever ignore warnings. Oh, this was the other thing. This is the second thing. When you're programming, please, please, please do not ignore warnings. In fact, test your code against multiple um, editors, anything. Find these warnings and correct them. So this is telling me that these two parameters aren't being used and it's quite right, they are not being used. Is that good or bad? Well it's good in the sense that we don't want to use them, it's bad in the sense that we've put them in and we're not going to use them. I'll show you what they're for actually in a second or two. Uh, let's go to debug. Run our lovely program. Oh, I forgot some spacing. Sorry. Okay. I goofed. Run a build. Uh, oops. There we go. So now you can store complicated numbers like three dimensional positions in a variable named whatever you want to call it. Uh, position, for instance. <laughs> Oh, bless. Press and key to close. There you go. Um, but yeah, programming made easy, huh? Now, I wanted to show you what those two up there were. So, let's just write a um, quick sentence of code. We'll make it standard library console out and we are going to put in argument number argc yeah that's looking good I'm only putting it on the separate lines because it makes it more readable for me so I know what I'm doing. Open bracket, open it some bit of code. Um, what can we call this arg v value? Yes, that's correct, isn't it? Equals value. It makes it easy for me to show you this. Now it's a pointer. Uh, I'll be there. Hmm. How do we put this in? It's a pointer. Pointers, pointers, pointers. Everybody gets them wrong. So just have a quick thing. How do I know? Do another program here on the side. Oh, we'll do it that way, do Okay, who cares? Thought so. Got brackets. That's why I stopped, because I wanted to know if it wanted an asterisk or not. 
Um, okay. And standard library line. There we go. Everybody's happy. <coughs> oh god, excuse me, I think I've got a cold. Run build task. Yeah, we're still getting all that rubbish. Um, here we go. Argument number one has the value of home phrase YouTube test exec test dot app, which is exactly correct. First value is run the program. There you go. That's what those little things there are for. Um, you can, for instance, pass a value in. So if I went to, let's see, tasks launch, program exec test, here we go. If I was to put, say, um, help. Actually, no, I'll just put the word help. I won't. It's standard to put a dash help. I'll just put help. Don't mind. Run the build task. Look, no complaints. Because we're using them. Yeah. There you go. Oh dear. Help does not exist. Ah, maybe it does need a minus sign. Oh no, it's args, isn't it? No. What? Oh. I'll put a minus sign there, see if it'll work on that. Might do, might not. Hey ho, oh, no. Well, that's what it's for. You'll just have to trust me on that. I don't really want to sit down here thinking about it at this point in time. But if you want to pass arguments into your... Actually, man. Right here, YouTube. Uh, where are we going? Test. Yeah, there it is. Test that app. As you can see, argument number two has the value of dot test dot app because there is now an argument one. It goes in reverse order. Oh great, I didn't even know that. But you can actually start scanning these values within your program. So if they passed in help, then you would print out a help. Simple as. There we go. That's what it looks like in the console, by the way. Uh, I don't want it happening, so use. Thank you. Uh, we now have VEC3. We now have MAT4. Something I didn't like there was putting that in, and then I'd have to put in maths slash vector3d.h. So there's one, only one alteration, and that's because I'm lazy. That is to go back into AMBSL. And under source, maths, add a new file, and we're just going to call it maths.h. Pragma. And all it's going to do is include 
you're wondering, he, he keeps doing his angle brackets and things. Uh, I'll explain that. The quotes mean we are going to give the direct path to the file. Well, the file is in the same directory, so we're perfectly fine. If I put that in, there it is, back to 3D. So, this is what I was saying, it not, wasn't picking it up. Um, that one there. There we go. So all I have to do now is include maths.h which will then include and that's the problem with includes. Includes can include includes which can include. This is why we have pragma once. To stop the same files being included over and over and over again. It will confuse the compiler and it will confuse the hell out of me. So we use Pragma once to stop that from happening. There we go, we've now got mass.h. Yeah. It's not compiled. But, uh, yeah. All we would need to do now is in main. Put maths dot h and then any time we altered our or added new files to our maths we then add it into maths dot h as an include and we don't need to alter our code it'll automatically appear into our code as if by magic and we'll be able to use it so there's your first complex program how's about that was it difficult no how long did it take stop it you that took us, what, 51 minutes, nearly an hour, to write a complete maths library and a program that uses it. Oh, um, if programming is hard, uh, or you find it this a difficult concept or th to get your head around it, then just watch the video again and th think about it. Just, just think about it. We're just, we're not even using .cpp files except for our main test. We will soon because maths is such a simple idea. I didn't want a .cpp file, simple as, because it is that easy. It is that simple to do your maths. Or in our case, storage for maths. Take that out. I'll go to here. I'll add them all. And I'll just put that as uh, foundation one, which is the name of today's video. Uh, put that in there. I'll pop that off to my server. Done. It's on my server now. There you go. I've got a copy of it for live, and I've now into everything we have no more warnings which is good um, we have no conflicts or anything of that kind because it's simple and it works scary isn't it you're programming in one library and you're using in a completely different program just with that one line there that did it brilliant huh I love it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I think everybody should try it. <laughs> but in the next episode, I'm not sure what we're doing next, but um, I'll look into it and we will go beyond our maths and we will go into... Um, how's about going straight into load the object file or something like that? Uh, we've got the maths to support it. You know what a struct is? It's a, I call it a structure. Uh, it's a complex data type. It's something that holds multiple bits, many bits of data. Um, it's, also, it's also a class, but that, ignore that. Ignore that. So there you go. It shows that A now holds three many bits. If I was to put a map 4 in, I just do that JSON file I did, didn't I? Thank you. 
Nothing to be done, what are you talking about? Plenty to be done. I'll argue with you all day, matey. Thank you. Now if I uh, compile test, it should still work, in theory. Dun, 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 dun. Does it still work? Yes, it still works. Oh, again. I'm bad. I'm bad. Oh, it's after the colon. There you go. Facing. Ah, oh, presentation. So there's your new fandangled system, which means that you can now write libraries to your heart's content. You can place bits and pieces into the library, and it literally becomes like an everyday library. Uh, uh, what, you, what you find in real life, you go into a library, it's a load of books. You go into our library, there's a load of functions. It's the same thing exactly the same idea so don't be fooled by these things all simple all easy there you go my space is right now i'm happy so i'm going to go and grab a cup of coffee think about the next video and uh let you have a break i think you've earned it if you typed any of that lot in or you typed all of it in i do apologize for that matrix bit but hey ho things like that are sent to try and test our patience so, good luck peeps, take care, and above all, have fun!